So I decided to uh, do my missionary interview on my parents, who um, they were missionaries in Costa Rica, Guatemala, uh, Mexico, China, and now Chile. Um, but I'm going to focus on the earlier years of just Costa Rica and Guatemala, um, and before that, and how they got to the mission field. Um, so. I interviewed, I interviewed my parents. Um, my dad's name is Mark and my mom's name is Pam. Um, yeah, uh, it's a really cool story um, how they were called to the mission field and some of the difficulties they had there and, um, and uh, how I actually was born on the mission field. So um, around 1992 or 1993, I'm not entirely sure when, but my parents moved um, to this really small town in Michigan, um, and uh, they actually originally did not move there like to become missionaries or anything, but they moved there, you know, just looking for jobs. Um, uh, but then they started having conversations with some of my mom's family there, um, and talking with some of the locals, uh, and they realized that there's a huge need, or there was a huge need there for, um, for mission work and for ministry. So my parents, um, they felt convicted and they felt called. And so they started um, up applying to the North American Mission Board. And um, yeah, and my dad actually, he was called to the mission field a long time ago when he was in his 20s, years ago. And he actually went on like mission trips to Mexico and everything. But it wasn't until this moment that my mom and my dad were both called to do ministry together. And so my dad got a job as a student ministry um, director at this university. And at the same time, he was also a pastor of the small church there. So um, with this new calling, they, you know, after they applied, they kept on working and they, they worked there for about four years, I think. And, um, you know, just work with that local community, with the church and with those students at that university. And my mom, you know, she didn't have uh, a job specifically, but she was busy raising my um, older siblings, um, five of my older siblings. So, you know, it was a little bit of a handful for her, but she was doing her own ministry through my older siblings and, you know, through that. So, um, whenever, um, uh, so yeah, sometime after that four years, my mom started to feel really convicted and she, at some point in her life, I uh, was very clearly called to go overseas to missions. Um, and my dad, you know, he'd been called to do overseas missions for a long time, but he had just felt he needed to be patient until they were both called. And it is the, at this moment, they were both called to do missions overseas. Um, and so uh, then they started the application process for the IMB. Um, and after they got accepted and everything, then they moved to Costa Rica because they felt called to, you know, be in Central America. They moved to Costa Rica to do um, language training there uh, for, you know, Spanish language. That wasn't their um, host country, but, you know, that was just for their language training. I think they were there for two years. So they were there for two years. And, of course, you have your, um, your basic... Uh, you know, trials of moving to a new country for mission work. They started, um, you know, they, had, they struggled with uh, culture shock. They struggled with a uh, language barrier. Um, and, and even my dad, actually, he also struggled with some sicknesses there. Um, and he was had to be hospitalized for some illnesses. <clears throat> um, but they they kept they they stayed there. It didn't require them to leave the country or anything. So they stayed in Costa Rica to finish up language school for two years. They learned a lot about uh, Hispanic and Latin American cultures and the language, you know, Spanish. And so did my older siblings. They were able to learn Spanish there too. So when they moved to um, Guatemala after those two years, they realized that Guatemala is completely different than Costa Rica, and it has a completely different. Um, it's a completely different culture, even though it's still Central America, you know? It's, um, it's not at all, uh, like, it's not the same country at all. And so everything they learned in Costa Rica was not, like, wasted, but it was, uh, they felt kind of discouraged because they had to, like, relearn the entire culture there of Guatemala. 
and uh, even the language was different. It was still Spanish and they could understand each other, but a lot of the slang and like the average everyday words that they would learn and use were completely different. Just as a lot of the words we use in, in America are completely different than they use in England as far as English is concerned. So they had to relearn so many different things. Um, and so that was crazy on top of meeting new people and starting this new job. So it was exciting slash hectic and, and, and difficult. And not that it was difficult in a, in a uh, negative way, but it was difficult in, I, I think, a constructive way. So they were the, um, the IMB, they were officially considered the strategy coordinators. Um, and <clears throat> my parents, um, they explained it to me that, uh, yeah, as strategy coordinators, they were also, yeah, church planters. So they, yeah, they were church planters and strategy coordinators. And they, um, th that was their job was to meet together with other missionaries in, you know, around the area and um locals you know who were not a part of the imb but like local christians there christian leaders and like pastors of churches to uh they were like how can we um strategically place churches um in new communities that maybe have not been exposed to you know christianity as much as others how can they you know further the gospel through that how can they spread the gospel and then meet with these people and communicate with them? And, like, how can we get them to come to church, to their own local churches? It was very important for my parents to, like, form churches there that were, you know, Guatemalan churches and not American churches. They didn't want it to be Americanized. They wanted Guatemalan pastors with Guatemalan, you know, people. And not even just Guatemalan, but also the, um, the, lo the local uh, Native American tribes there, the Native South American tribes there. <clears throat> um, there were known as the Kekchi, I want to say, and, um, so they, uh, they had even translators translating from the Native American, um, uh, to, from the Native American, uh, tribes there to Spanish, and from Spanish translated to English to some of the missionaries who came from the United States who didn't speak Spanish, did they visited for mission trips, um, and so they had all these people working together, with completely different language barriers and they had to like figure out strategically and logistically how to make these things work um and how to how to witness and how to share the gospel so <clears throat> yeah um uh whenever they moved to mexico i was about two years old um then we, we, they moved to mexico because in guatemala they had a lot of uh issues with danger and so there was these lynch mobs there and the political climate started getting crazy and i don't i haven't done too much research on what the political climate was exactly and the cause of that or whatever but in all in their neighborhood in their street um in that city they you know there was a lot of riots and a lot of violence and setting people's homes on fire and you know my parents being white and different <laughs> that was more i was a danger to them because you know in those kind of situations, in those uh, those smaller villages, um, it can it can be a really dangerous thing. So they had to move. They and but they still want to stay in the mission field. So they moved to Mexico, and that's where I grew up. Basically, my whole life was in Mexico. Um, and in Mexico, I remember seeing a little bit more. You know, as a kid, like um, what my parents did a little bit, and understanding what that looked like. Um, however, we had to we had to move from Mexico eventually and from like one, well, one spot in Mexico to another spot because of danger in Mexico and with like drug lords and everything, which I'm sure you guys know a little bit more about that than the Guatemalan stuff. But the point is that um, even throughout everything that was dangerous, all their difficulties, everything they had to persevere through and not coming to the U.S. for like every, you know, I don't know, four years, I think, three or four years, um, it was difficult for my parents and my entire family, but my parents still stayed humble, um, but still proud, you know, servants to the Lord. And that had always been an inspiration to me, but it wasn't until I came to college and really started studying m mission work and what that means from an academic standpoint that I really developed an appreciation for their work there and what it means. And I think one of the biggest things about mission work, um, and my parents would agree, is, is inspiration. And you need to uh, be able to allow yourself to be used by God 
because God can use your story as an inspiration to send other people. And that is an example in Jim Elliott and in uh, Corey Ten Boom and as well as William Carey and so many other missionaries that are uh, so well known whose stories and testaments have been used as an inspiration to send more people and to reach more people groups. Um, so yeah, that's my parents' story. Um, yeah. <laughs>